I had a feeling you'd be showing up. I'm John Zadark. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is June 28th. It is Tuesday. Now, if you haven't seen my show before, what I do is I bring to your attention OTC and penny stocks that I've seen through the day that have got something going on for them, something you should be paying attention to. Now, you've got to remember, a penny stock is any stock under $5. It doesn't have to be on the OTC market. It can be on any market. Now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website where I do all of my due diligence for all stocks. I mean all of them. It's perfect for the OTC market because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. Now, think about that. Updated daily. What's the point of searching for information when you know where it's constantly and always current? But I do use this site for NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange stocks as well. Now, they don't have all the information for them, but it's a good place to start. And if I don't find what I'm looking for, well, I've always got that option to jump on out there and waste my time searching. But initially, this is my go-to site all the time. This is where I start. So let's take a look at what the OTC did today, the backbone of where we're trading. We did $2.5 billion worth in volume today, which is exactly the same as yesterday. Now, our average is 2.1. We do that virtually every day, and we don't normally have two strong days in a row. So that is curious to me. I like to see that go up, but it's not my main concern. Our trades, we're about the same as we were yesterday, 5,000 trades we dropped. So we're right around 300,000. And our share volume, which is what we're truly interested in, this is critical. We did 10.2 billion today, we dropped 1 billion from yesterday. And we had dropped from Friday as well. So after 10, 11 days of running up in volume, we have had two days of dropping. Now you gotta understand, we have not had 10 days of volume increase in a row for, oh geez, maybe a full year. I'm not kidding. It has been a long time, so we are looking like we have a trend change. However, we've got a dip, if you will, right now in the volume. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to be able to watch that climb. Now, you've been noticing the news over here? I've been trying to find ways to give you added value with the time that we spend together. I really appreciate you being here. And if you appreciate my time, I would love to have you subscribe so that you can keep up with me. And hey, if you like this particular show, hit that like button. That helps my algos. It really helps me. So this news over here is handpicked. It's not just generic news I went and grabbed to fill it up. No, this is handpicked news I think most of you will be interested in one way or the other. Oldest news on the top, most current on the bottom. And it's only a few days of news. Then I'm also going to share with you the stocks I discard. What I mean by that is I have to choose which three stocks I'm going to share with you in these videos. But I normally have more that I could have. So I'm going to show you the stock and the reason I was going to show it to you, but didn't. And I'll let you take it from there. Now, we are going to be looking at some stocks today that we have looked at before. I won't lie. But you need to be looking at them again because they're giving more money away. Don't you want to take part in that? I thought you would. So let's go take a look at what I got for you. We're taking a look at a stock that I did cover just about three days ago, but it cannot be ignored. This is ticker CMGR Clubhouse Media Group. Finished the day at 007 with 112% gains. Now the reason we looked at it three days ago, it did over 900% gains at its high. And it held most of those gains. And here it is jumping again. Folks, you're going to see a chart that has a habit of jumping. And you can predict virtually 9 out of 10 times when it's going to do that. And I'm going to show you how. So this company is on the pink tier. They are current. They've got a transfer agent. But we don't see a verified profile here. And that is important. There's a lot of information involved in this. It's validated by the OTC markets here behind the scenes. And being a pink, you want to get as much verified information as you can. So we hope to see that pretty soon. So what is this company about? Well, this is a very large influencer media marketing company with a global network of professionally run content houses, each of which has its own brand, influencer cohort, and production capabilities. 
they are an influencer company. They go out and hire celebrities and personalities and they use them as influencers and make money off of it. And they have been doing this for a while and their team is getting rather big. So they did have news come out today. That is why it ran. What was the relative volume around this company? Well, she normally has been doing about 22 million a day. Today she did 353 million. A huge kick in volume. Our share structure, okay. Now it occurs to me, I sometimes forget to look these up. I tell you I'm going to, but I'm rushing to get these out so quick that sometimes I forget to do what I'm supposed to. So I'm gonna try to remember to go look up CMGR if I can find the float, I'll put it right up there. If I don't, so that you don't think I forgot, I will put question marks. I'll try not to forget this time. We got 173 million outstanding shares. You can't trust the float. I know it's sitting there, but that's from 2020, and I guarantee you it is not 7 million. We would hope it was, but I am telling you it is not 7 million. Uh, news. No, not yet. Financials. Yeah, let's go to financials. Well, they are making money for the last two years. They've just gotten things going, obviously, and they're kicking butt, I mean, increasing. They had $1 million. We've got three zeros up here we got to put behind there. And this last year, they got $4.2 million. Did cost them quite a lot. They got to pay all those influencers, don't they? $3.4 million, so they got to keep three quarter million dollars. Disclosures. What do we got over here? Well, of course, their financials are going to be up to date. And there's the most recent 8K. You always want to read 8Ks. They're like golden eggs. You never know what you're going to find inside, but it's usually good news. It's an acquisition or a merger or a new CEO or something. But that's where they hide them is normally in the 8Ks. But that's a ways back, and it's not going to have anything to do with why it's running today. What is the news? So this is the most current news. They have old news back here, but you can see they are already adding people to their company back in this time. And we are back in 2021 of February. That's February back there. And this is the most current news. Now, three days ago on the 22nd of June, they put this news release out that they had closed a promo deal with Rob Gronkowski, a four-time Super Bowl champion. And it surged, folks. It just ripped it up. You'll see it on the chart. But they have been hiring people all along. And when you look at the chart, what you're going to see is a nice steady downtrend. Prices getting cheaper and cheaper. And as you see the red bars, you then see one green spike. And then you see more red bars and then a green spike. Every one of those green spikes is a news press. All of these news presses, the ones where they hire somebody, whoop, it jumps. And depending how popular you are, that's how big it spikes. And this one really spiked. <laughs> they had news just the other day on the 23rd. They closed a promo deal with Lana Rhodes Adult Entertainment Icon. Now, I don't know how far spread they are and what sort of influencing they do, but adult entertainment, well, it's got to be a tighter niche than most. And when you look at the chart, there was no activity for Lana Rhodes, sorry to say. But there was motion on the charts today with this news. Clubhouse Media Group closed its promo deal with Target Corporation. Now, it isn't what you think it is, but it is news that got the price moving. So this came out today, June 28th. They say the deal included a live stream event by a prominent social media influencer as well as two Instagram feed posts. Now, Target ranks number 32 on the 2021 Fortune 500 list of the largest U.S. corporations and is one of the nation's top 10 retailers. The CEO says, I was beyond excited to work with Target on a successful live stream to support their new maternity line. And that's it, folks. There is no more news. So they did a live event for them using one of their influencers and the stock moved today. Let's go take a look at that. Now, no doubt you recognize the trading platform I'm using. It's Thinkorswim. You need one? You want to back up in case yours goes, bleh. Go on over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for a free account. That's all there is to it. Just keep your account open and you've got yourself a free trading platform to use. So we are looking at CMGR again. We are on a six month, four hour chart. She has been under the 200 the entire time. I don't think she's ever touched it once. 
she's been under the 50 and here we really can't tell what is going on because it looks like looks like nothing is we can see a ton of volume right here in the last few days but for that not much now as i said this looks like nothing is going on but let's zoom in on that because this is where the real information comes in she's literally on a downtrend she is falling right now but what i want you to take notice of is these green spikes as she's falling each one of these green spikes correlates to a news press and depending on who they hired that determines how big the spike is it's pretty much religious and you know what's really great about this you got in here you took your money and it fell the next opportunity comes it's a lot cheaper the price has gotten cheaper so when it jumps your percentage is probably going to be the same as it was up here if not bigger each time it has been falling which is really sad because the company is growing in revenues they are growing in stature they're working with big companies now like target you would think it would start to climb and quit falling but whether it's climbing or whether it's falling it's probably going to be the same sort of pattern depending on who they hire you're gonna get a jump and if they're important you're gonna get a big jump let's take a look at the 20 day no not on this chart <laughs> let's come over to this one let's take a look at the 20 day one hour view all right she has been running downhill waiting for news right here was the news about our Super Bowl champion. Big, huge jump, almost 900%. Threw it virtually all the way, right? We are just a step up from where it started then. And here we go again, another big rip. Now, of course, it's not as big as that one, but that is, it finished at 112. What did it actually get? We got uh, 0 0.0038, let's just call it 38, and we got up here to 134. So from 38 to 134, you're looking at about, well, the high 300s, 350, 370% gains before it fell back to 112. So here you had a 900% gain. Don't get greedy, get out. Here we have almost a 400% gain, get out. And look at this, we're talking in just four days. Talk about the money you could have made on this. Can we get a cha-ching? There you go. So. Keep this on your watch list permanently. I mean, the company isn't going anywhere, right? So every time a news press comes out, and I'm not talking your watch list, that's going to be looking for volume. You want to be watching the news. You want to check the news on this company each day, and as soon as you see it, early, early, that's going to be the day to play it. We don't know how big the jump will be, but boy, are they religious. Um, <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the next stock. We're now taking a look at a penny stock that is not on the OTC market. This is on the NASDAQ, ticker ENDP, Endo International. She finished today at 71 cents with over 85% gains. She was really running strong this morning and held most of her gains, to be honest. Now that price, definitely a penny stock, and it's a great price. The problem is she is on the NASDAQ, and they have a minimum price requirement. You can't let your price go under a dollar not for too long if you do you will get a firm warning from the nasdaq they will tell you to get that price up over a dollar and close over a dollar for 10 days in a row or they'll yank you off the open market they'll yank you off the nasdaq and put you down to the otc and nobody nobody wants that so when you have a company that has strong revenues and you're going to see this company does normally you see these prices under a dollar get pushed right up over that dollar and out of the danger zone don't know how, but it seems to happen quite often. So that's one of the reasons we're looking at this. But the bigger reason, it's a contraception play. Absolutely is this company through a subsidiary, Parfarm, has a drug, Preva Femme. And this is a contraception drug that they sell. And that's all it takes is to have one product that's working with contraception. And these companies are taking off. Now there was another piece of news today it seems that the company's target price was raised today. How convenient, right? You need the price to get up over a dollar. So they have received a average target price. That's kind of weird, average, of $3. They had seven analysts give their evaluation on this company, and they all came in between 2 and $4. So they've averaged it out to $3. As I said, 
It's real convenient when you need to get your 71 cent stock price up over a dollar. So what I presume will probably happen, I see this happen a lot, when a price target comes out from analysts that are trusted, you will see the price rise just pennies below whatever the target was. So we got a $3 price target here, could easily go to 298, getting out of the danger zone and right up underneath the absolute maximum value of the stock. I wouldn't be surprised at that at all. So what was the relative volume of this company today? She normally does 25 million shares, which isn't a drop in a bucket, but today she did 464 million. You're talking almost a half a billion shares. That is a ton of attention without a real catalyst of her own. Not really. What is the share structure on this? All right, this one I already looked up. I was ready for this one. Outstanding shares is 235 million. The unrestricted shares is where we get our float. They don't have anything here. I know it says float here, but folks, don't trust that line. I looked it up and it seems 201 million is the float. Not a low float, not a high float, just your average float. Though a lot of people would call 200 million a low float. It isn't gonna hurt the gains, I'll tell you that much. So what do we have for the financials? Well, how about that, folks? Look it. We have to take three zeros up here and bring those down behind these numbers. So you're looking at virtually $3 billion that they did at the end of last year. And it cost them $1.2 billion, so they got to keep $1.7 billion. So the company definitely has strong revenues and they are making good profit at the end of the year. Disclosures, we got anything new over here? Uh, no filings. Those are somewhere. I don't know where. They're down here. We got an SC13G that came out yesterday. Uh, this is telling you about uh, shareholdings from a couple of the insiders, but I don't really think, I don't think, I may be wrong, but I don't really think that is why this stock was running today. I think it was all about being a contraception company and getting their price target raised. Though I think we're still going to see some activity on that. Speaking of seeing activity, let's go take a look at that chart. We're taking a look at ENDP's chart. This is six month, four hour. We got a high back here of $7.06 and a low just a few days ago of 28 cents. You can see she's been under the 200 all this time. She's tagged it once here, maybe tagged it there, and she just tagged it today. Our technicals, oh, the MACD is pushing up right now. The RSI was strong, still in the overbought, but not going to be there long the way it looks. And the CCI, Commodities Channel Index, is falling, though it's still above the top third line. So it does look good. Volume, well, once it started, you can see there was very little volume here. Now it's gotten to be a little stronger average. And then today, today just ripped. And it looks like we just touched the 200 day on the four hour. Let's see what that 20 day one hour view offers up. So here comes our 200 falling all the way down and looks like it is just curving up right now. Again, we're fighting with the 200, banging our heads against it and it looks like the 50 day SMA just scooped up the price and carried it right up over here where she launched. Technicals now definitely are pulling by it, cooling off a lot. Five day, five minute definitely shows the tail of the day. There was nothing going on before, as you could see there. And just before market open, that was uh, 10 minutes to nine. Now, since there was no real news that came out today, all we had was that price target. That price target must have come out at 10 to nine. Why else did it run from this part of the day when it was all flat here? Volume was real strong. She took off, got up here to 82 cents, starting at 40 cents. That's where she was this morning, 40 cents, got up to 82, so you are over 100% gains. And she did fall away a little bit, but she kept most of them, 85% gains, but after market, she's starting to lose it, isn't she? All the technicals have gotten cold. All of them are like pieces of ice now. There's nothing there to be seen. However, this is the contraception play that could go on and on, have hot spots the next time Judge Thomas says something. If this company comes out with news and just puts themselves back in front of the investors' faces, we can easily see 
these different contraception companies popping at different times repeatedly over and over. So as you get these companies' names, keep them in your watch list. We don't know how long there's going to be pops on these sort of stocks. ENDP definitely belongs on your watch list long term. I can assure you this company has nothing to do with contraception. This is ticker VXIT, Ver Exit Technologies. Finished today at 0023, just over 64% gains. She's on the pink tier in current, and she's got those ever precious green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Verified profile, verified transfer agent. With a pink especially because that's verified information. And we don't get a lot of verified information with a pink. So that looks real good in that regards. What does look concerning is that shell risk. Now this is not to be confused with a shell company. A shell company is like an empty warehouse that just isn't being used. It's a ticker that has no business. They're waiting for a reverse merger, an acquisition, some deal to get them going. But a shell risk is a company that's already in business. They're just not making any money. They're not reporting any revenues. Now that's the reason I think the stock is rising today. There wasn't any news, there wasn't any filings, but there was a tweet that teased the investors and definitely got their hopes up that revenues are going to be beginning. And I'll share that with you here in just a second. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that in 2020, VXIT acquired the registered brand of Vire Exit along with other related intellectual property. Also in 2020, they purchased Safer Place Technologies, whose purpose is to create a primary sales and marketing platform as a vertical online marketplace. So you got one company making the products and the other subsidiary as a place for them to sell them. And this is what they're all about right there. They tell us here they are into virus detectors, surface and atmosphere snippers, electrostatic spray, FDA approved air system that destroys 99.9% .9 of the airborne viruses. Uh, they've got this weapons thing here. When you walk through it, it'll tell you about weapons, body temp, mask detection. I don't know how it does that. Uh, COVID test, 15 second test. Uh, mist tunnels for removing viruses on clothes. Wow, I didn't know they had that. Personal repellent badge and a 99.9% .9 personal protection mask that can be reused. That was something that they really liked to push. So they've got a lot of different products and now they've got a place to sell them. So what is the relative volume around that tweet today? One little tweet. Well, about triple, tripled the volume with about 8 million to 25 million. Not bad for a tweet, eh? What is the share structure? Oh, well, sooner or later, you got to see a big one. Wow, look at that. What is that? One, two, three. Oh, come on, folks. That's uh, just shy of a trillion shares. A trillion shares authorized. My God. And the unrestricted shares is our float. 2.1 million in the float. It's a lot. We got any financials over here? They say they don't. And they don't. They absolutely have nothing. Disclosures. They are all caught up on their financials, and we have nothing new down here. So let's jump on over to that news. As you can see, there is nothing here since uh, April. They were going into a conference. These conference pieces of news look boring, but folks, when you see that they're going to be at a conference April 27th, look for the price to start going up April 28th, 29th, or 30th because that's when the people who went to this conference will start buying their shares the next day, the day after, and payday. So after these conferences, look for the price to rise. So we got no new news here. This is all older news. So this is the tweet, and it actually comes from their own Twitter account. So we know it's viable information. And as you can see down here, November was the last time they tweeted to us. So the tweet came out today, about five hours ago. It's six o'clock now, so it came out about one o'clock in the afternoon. In New York this week, looking to close additional acquisitions for Vera Exit. Meeting with investment bankers today, hoping to provide more updates this week as they become available. Not very specific at all, but when you've been silent for a while, people will eat up whatever you tell them. So the stock is running. Let me show you. 
But of course, we're looking at a six month, four hour chart for VXIT first. And those high bubble, low bubbles are reversed from what I'm used to. We got a low further back of 001 and a high here of 0067. So you've got over 600% jump right here. But once you hit that high, it was downhill all the way. Tried to hang out on the 200 for a while, but lost it and has come all the way back down to 0023. I can see she is not shy on volume. She's got lots of volume, especially back here. It is a little thinner here in the current time, but it looks like it's starting to grow again. Our technicals, I see we got a crossover in the MACD, pushing up to the signal line. RSI is streaking up, as is the CCI. And that commodities channel index is really high, folks. That's 266. 200 is like the ceiling. I mean, it can go past that, but when it does, it is screaming. So she's getting a lot of attention right now. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view. All right, so 10 days ago, she wasn't doing hardly anything. And then when she started doing something, it wasn't good. Fell all the way down here to a low of 0012. The low is 001. So she was just a smidge above that. And she bounced off that, but not very much. And then today, with just a single tweet, the price went flying. <whistles> Way up there. Technicals, very strong. A little bit of a pullback on the CCI, but everything really looks nice right now. All for a tweet. All right, so there's your five day, five minute. And everything looks really good. You had all the SMAs coming downhill. Everything. And now everything is pushing up. We just had the 200 day SMA come into the picture and it seems to be at the bottom, right at the cusp of starting to turn up. Everything looks really nice here. Technical on MACD is still pushing up strong with just a wee bit of pullback for that right there. RSI is taking a dip still in the mid 60s and the CCI is pulled back because of that as well. We did have a nice strong jump here from 0013 up to 0024 all on a tweet. Now, if he puts another tweet out there, it may continue to run. It may still run based on that tweet. Definitely could. And he said that he's going to be bringing that information to us this week, not next week. So we anticipate that information to come in just the next few days. So you may want to keep this on your watch list for that imminent bounce, right? All right, let me show you the stocks I didn't show you tonight. I'll show you what they are and why I thought they were worthy of showing you. And then I'll let you do the DD on them if you think they're good enough. So just real quick, real brief, so that you know and can put them on your list and go do some DD of your own. We have EVFM, EvoFam Biosciences. They had news today. EvoFam reaches agreement with one of the largest pharmacy benefit managers in the USA for access to Fexi. And we can see here that Fexi is the drug of choice with this company. This is their website. This is the drug they use. They are securing a stronger supply chain now. The next stock is AGRX. There is no catalyst of their own. It's another contraception play. Absolutely is AGRX. The next stock that I was looking at today was SNM Global. Right there, SNMN. They had news come out a little while ago, but what has really got this stock moving is the tweets. The tweets are focusing in on some of the pieces of news that are big, and one of them is this. They had made a deal, a memorandum of understanding for U.S. water infrastructure projects. And this sentence right here, the purpose is to utilize its proprietary IQPR micro quantum reaction persistent technology and up to $2.3 billion in funding for the project. So there is a whole lot of money just sitting out there on the table waiting to pour into this company and people are talking about it and that's the only reason it's really running. Last one I was considering was CPMD. They have had news in the past. They've got things going on, but there's nothing going on right this very minute, except that the charts look good. Let me show you what I mean. So this is CPMD. You're looking at a one hour, 20 day. You can see over the last, oh, I don't know, five days, six days, she has slowly been picking up momentum and it's been getting stronger, right? Well, even though she's already had this much run, I think it's time to really pay attention. We come all the way out to one year. Right there, folks. 
right there you can see she's been far under the 200 for a year and right now she has just broke it and stayed above it so she has worked her way across all those SMAs once she got on top of this 50 that was a big jump that was a huge jump to get up there it really wanted to be there and I think if it wants to be there it wants to be higher so without any catalyst just a lot of attention from investors and great technicals I'd be putting CPMD on my watch list as well so what did you find interesting in all that I just shared there was a lot of information there just in that scrolling news alone my goodness there are reverse mergers acquisitions free tokens dividends there was a lot covered there goodies 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 then I showed you two contraception companies and added one at the end AXGR all these contraception companies are gonna run I don't know how far they're gonna run but they're each gonna take their turn and maybe multiple times then we looked at a tweet we looked at technicals you see folks there are runners for all kinds of reasons out there and I love sharing this information with you so hopefully you're gonna put some money in your pocket with something you saw here today remember the more you know the more you're gonna grow see you folks